I'm Debbie Santee. And I'm Vicki Woolridge, and we're sisters. <laughs> it's perfect. And so where are we right now? We're in Decatur, Illinois. Where is that? Um, Central Illinois. Yeah. In the middle of the state, Central Illinois, at Vicki's house. Perfect. It's a beautiful house, and we had a nice breakfast already. And we're going to have a really good lunch, I think, Yes. Mm -hmm. later. And you've been nothing but very gracious hosts since we've arrived. Thank you. And so the, the first thing that we like to ask is, how did you kind of uh, get introduced to our music, like, and why are we here? Uh, okay. Um, and not like existentially, why are we here? Right. What is our purpose? <laughs> I mean, you can go there you, if you'd you, like. You've known me but, for a little while. You, but are, like, physic, you are going to go like this. Physically, <laughs> physically, like, like how, wh why are we here in Decatur with you? Like, how did that come about? Okay. Um, the viral video. Grand Masquerade um, popped up on my newsfeed from uh, a group that I follow. I was surprised that he had shared it, and I thought, hmm, maybe I'll look at this. And I looked at it, and from the time the music started, I felt um, different. I'll say different. Um, I had to close my eyes. I didn't even watch it. I had to close my eyes and just feel um, that music. And I had been in a very bad place, um, having lost my husband, Russ, uh, almost nine years before that. Um, I didn't know how blocked off I really was. Um, I lived every minute of every day in grief without realizing that I was doing that. And something began to feel different. I played that video um, probably 20 times that day. And I just cried and cried and cried. And I started every morning with it. Um, every day for about a week. And then I wrote you and explained that it had really um, made a difference and made a change in my life. But what I didn't tell you when I wrote you about Russ, and you don't know this, dear, um, you actually uh, uh, saved my life with um, that video. Um, Because I was, uh, frequently thinking how much better it would be to be with Russ than to be here. Mm -hmm. And um, when you asked um, a few weeks ago about the healing power mm -hmm. of music, and I said you, you may never know, um, how healing your music is, you literally saved my life. And because of that, um, I just wanted to be able to connect with you um, maybe in a more intimate way. Mm -hmm. And that's why I just started, you know, messaging you every once in a while. And if you answered me, it was, it was great, but my life, um, from that point on, um, I ordered the videos right away and the t-shirt and everything, you know, and I listened to the music every single day and my life got better every single day. It got better. And then when you asked about places to play, you know, and I said, well, go to Atlanta, you know, because mm -hmm. I know somebody there, go to Atlanta. And then I was talking with Vicki and she said, didn't you ask him to come here? And I went, no, but I will. <laughs> so it was actually her idea. Ah, yeah, it was actually her right. idea. And I said, I don't know if they will. Yeah. And so I asked you and you said yes. And then it just, everything, the universe agreed and everything fell into place and you're here. Yeah. And we are blessed that you're here. Thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs>
uh, as a follow-up to what you were just saying is like why what what was it about what you heard that provoked that response like do you think that you were like ready for that and it was just like that ended up just being like the trigger that kind of set in motion what you were already prepared to do which was finally to kind of let go of some grief that you've been holding for a while or do you think that really was the catalyst that kind of set everything in motion that's, after the fact that's really interesting i think i think the universe was ready for me to be different mm -hmm. um and i wasn't um ready to move away from that grief right um and i think that um that is why your video came into my life because I strongly believe um, in the universe, so energy and all of that directing towards us and helping us in our lives. Mm -hmm. And I really think, I really think that all our loved ones said, hey, you got to do something different. You can't keep having these thoughts. Things have to change for you. Mm -hmm. And there's a way that we can make that happen mm -hmm. very quickly, as opposed to, you know, baby steps, mm -hmm. stair steps, slowly changing things. I mean, it was like that. Yeah, just I, like that. Because it's like that's cool. Yeah. And as was, as her sister, I mean, you you said yesterday, and now I like now it's becoming a lot more obvious as to why. But you said that like, um, that this uh, our music basically had provoked such a change so it's definitely mm -hmm. something that you noticed as well like it was a noticeable change very noticeable friends yeah. and family have said what happened yeah. and I say the trouble notes happened that's crazy <laughs> I seriously seriously right yes and it's a very spiritual experience to listen to your music and I have not been carrying around grief but both Scott and I have listened in the experience is so deep. I but would you, say that. Like how, how much of an influence do you think that is from her, though, as well? Like that you've small. Yes. Yeah. I right. have no influence over her. No, <laughs> no I'm no, not no, saying but, that. No, but, but, but we but, have separate experiences. Yeah. And really, to be very honest with you, I have been waiting to listen to your music. Yeah. I, I haven't been listening. It's true. And I've been waiting. I, I don't know why I was waiting. And I I wanted to prepare to have you here and welcome you in our home. But I would say probably just in the last week we've listened. None of the family really has listened to it. They've together. listened to me yeah, talk, talk about, about it. it. Yeah, of course. But, but they that's... haven't really listened to it. I think okay. before last night um, when the family was there, yeah. I think that's probably the first experience for some of them which is that. which which makes me happy in fact because for us you know we always i would always prefer that your first introduction to what we do is to see it live yeah do you know because like the recording i think recorded music especially like music like ours it's it's more important when you have the the experience and then the recordings bring back the experience mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to make uh, to, to feel something from a recording and then you know what I mean because like right. you, you I think the live giving of, oh. of the energy and and that is it doesn't transport as well as which is why for us the video thing is always so incredible because that video none of us understand it we don't it's the reason we're asking this question and doing this is that we don't understand how so many people connected with it because like for us you know when we saw that video we were like okay you know and it was just like uh, you know the the visual quality is not very good mm -hmm. the, the setting is beautiful right. no question but i mean that i it, it it's incredible how many people connected with that video and and we have learned over time like it's something we've appreciated so much but when we first saw it it was like we didn't even appreciate it oh, and so okay. i feel like there's an invisible thread 
among people and I haven't seen the video yet to tell you the truth Super. so I've just been listening to the yeah. music I haven't been watching but so I think there's something invisible that connects us and the music is so sacred and the the passion and the joy and the depth that you share that with it connects with people in a way that you can't explain it's beyond words i think which is why we don't use them that's right. yes i absolutely i would love that when yeah. last night you said you know we don't we don't sing words but we have a lot to say. To say. Yeah, yeah. We it, that was very powerful to me, and you know, like goosebumps. Because <laughs> <'cause> it, <laughs> it, it's true that, like you know, sometimes I think that there are certain types of emotions that rationally you can't really understand. Mm -hmm. Do you know, like your mind is not your the rational mind is not capable of putting words to to understand them. That's why we have feelings. It will, but and in my opinion, music in a crazy way is like the language of emotion. You can ex you can transport a lot from very little. Mm -hmm. You know, just a few vibrations and frequencies that you you understand as notes, right? But there's a lot that's packed into those vibrations, mm -hmm. and I think that in especially for myself as a melody writer, like that's mm -hmm. how I make sense of things that I, I can't really explain rationally. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It reminds like, me of our grandson who's two and yeah. when it's nap time we'll, you know, rock a bit and sing and I'll say, what song do you want? And he'll go, hmm, yeah. he just wants that's, me to That's home. what he wants, right. He, he wants that connection without those words. Yeah. It, yeah, precisely. And it's because I think that that speaks to, uh, you, you know, the, the thing that I think is so beautiful about music is that like, I mean, language in a way is music as it is, right? Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but music at its core is the language that we all speak. We, we all understand music differently, absolutely. You can say that some of it's left up to interpretation, but you know, if there are melodies that you can play and everyone in the room will know that without there being words, will know that I meant when I'm hearing this to feel sad, mm -hmm. or this is meant to make me feel anxious, or this is meant to make me feel excited, or uh, happy, you know, it's just like little things that we all interpret the same way, you know, and I think right. that that's the same with um, church as well. I find this so incredible that I've walked into to different churches or synagogues or temples around the world, and I, you know, I won't say much about what I how I feel about organized religion, but one thing that I do think is incredible is when you walk into those rooms, you can feel there's something spiritual in that place and I think that it has to do with the people who channel so much of their energies through song, through collective prayer, they leave that in the walls. Mm -hmm. And I think that's for me what's hallow, is that's what's really, in, like something divine in a way, is the, the coming together of people to channel a collective spirit and it leaves a fingerprint on the walls of the place where it's where it happens. Absolutely does. Mm -hmm. When I was talking with Flo earlier, mm -hmm. um, we were talking about just that, how music um, makes a bond of everyone that actually hears that particular music, no matter when they hear it. That's a bond that's created mm -hmm. that is always going to exist. And that is the bond of universal source of love because that is what creates everything right so that is where you guys are actually coming from is the complete and universal source of love when you create what you create and it can't not exist anymore once mm. it's created right that's true and it goes on forever and everyone Especially that was involved gets to experience it yeah. in their own way, but yeah. Hmm. And that's what we want is like, you know, kind of in your own way. Like it, it, even sometimes it, you feel a bit guilty for telling too many stories because you know, you, you, you know, but what I mean by mm -hmm. that is not, mm -hmm. it's important I think that the audience mm -hmm. gets to understand our perspective, Right. but you also love when you leave kind of a blank canvas and say, okay, I'm just gonna play and you can paint, uh, you feel what you want that's also something very powerful, you know, that you get to make your own motion picture. Mm -hmm. We just give you the soundtrack. And that's very yeah. generous of you. Yes, yeah. it is. Very generous. Really is. Like with me with Boda. 
you know yeah, yeah. it's not at all what you says no you no know, for me it's not at all what you said yeah it is but for me it's everything right you know it's everything it's always going to be my everything song of yours even though i love everything that you do boda is always going to be it for me that's cool i think that you know that that song in particular has been affected a lot by the, the different places where we've played it too which is what's really cool mm -hmm. you know like like as we what it was when it first kind of came together and to where it's progressed now I think has it's gone through multiple transformations mm -hmm. uh, and so even the story that we tell about where what that that's only an origin story it's not really an end piece you know what right, I mean right right and uh, there's a few of them like that that have really like evolved over time you know because like when we started playing it in france it took a new meaning and then when we went to italy it changed as well you know it's like because the the culture the local culture kind of changed the, the way that we played it you know and it lives differently or something it, it, it's they're living and songs it lives they absolutely differently in are. every place yeah you know? wow. yeah that's something that's really cool is that like you know we and it's the reason it's still fun. Like I, I think that you know, if you write a pop song, for example, and you've always got you've always got to play it the same way. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I think you, you as a performer would get very bored of I'm playing the same so. song the yeah. same way. You know, with the backing track and with all the stuff, and it's got to sound the same for the people. Otherwise, oh, it's being played differently. And what's mm -hmm. cool about our songs is we absolutely have a structure but but the what happens from the start to the finish is kind of up to how we feel in that moment it might be slower it might be faster it might have more energy it might have more beauty it might have more sadness it, it just really depends on us and the audience and where we are That's and i've seen that cool. in the different videos yeah. you know because i recognize the songs because I listen you yeah, know, of course. so much, so I recognize but the songs, always a little bit and different. they're always a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what is it going to sound like when I see this video? Yeah, you know. And last night was last night. I was in heaven. Okay, <laughs> not literally, but yeah, I was very I close. Yeah. Okay, fair play. If and we can help um, you get there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> and um, started to play Boda. I I had to get up and walk around mm -hmm. so that I didn't cry and you could have cried I don't think anybody I, would cared well but better I would have I yeah. would have cared right. um, but <laughs> each and so I knew every song except for one I wasn't sure what one of them was oh there's a new one that was I knew that's yeah. what I said to yeah. Sandy I said they said they had some new stuff it has to be new because I don't know what it is yeah I know what it but is. Mm -hmm. each one of them made me feel differently listening to it and watching you play mm -hmm. than watching the videos or listening to it on my CDs. Yeah, right. It was just, I was like, I didn't know what to expect from the show. Good. I didn't. <laughs> I just knew that I wanted to experience it fully. Mm -hmm. And I did. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. I did. Thank you. It was fabulous. Thank you. It was fun. No, you've been, and also I, we can't thank you enough. You know, I mean, that for also just hosting and being so generous with. We're happy. Our small contribution to Pepsi. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big contribution <laughs> to this girl. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Cool. And then I think maybe the last thing would be just to go to lose your ties. The 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 theme of kind of it all, you know, if you will. And I I just want we've been asking everybody what that theme means for them and if they have anything kind of personal that they could share about the, the this kind of red line, this thread that kind of ties it all together or in this way loses the tie yeah. of it all together. Well, um, lose your ties for me, um, it's about knowing that it's time to be different, mm -hmm. knowing that it's okay um, to go forward, but still have what you had in your past. Sure. Um, each day I feel like I'm getting better and I'm getting stronger because of your music and 
I have lost the desire to be in grief. Yeah, that's if cool. that makes sense. I can yeah. connect with you on that. I have lost that desire to um, stay within myself but that maybe all the time. Perhaps was the thing that is tying you back, right? Yes, is the, yes. The, the desire to be in grief, not the yes. grief itself. Yes, yeah. mm. because that was all of this, well, that was instantly from the second he was gone, that was instantly my identification yeah. of, of who I was. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh my God, here I am a widow again. Yeah. You know, and I had family members who um, said, oh my God, you're widowed again. And it's like, boom, there was my identity. Yeah, right, I'm the widow. And I could not, maybe because maybe because I felt like I had to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. um, I could not let go of that. And I, it's now a des and I have that desire to let that go. Mm -hmm. And that's what losing my tie is. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I get it. I never, okay. in fact, I never like, because of course for me, like the tie was always uh, associated to two things and one was a career and the other I guess which would be a little bit similar was uh, this this feeling of um, this obligation if you will to, to make uh, family and friends who had an expectation of what successful right. means and what mm -hmm. this was you know to kind of play to their right. expectations right, right? And in your sense, I guess it's exactly the same, that you are playing to the expectations of this is, I mean, everyone is expecting me to be the grieving widow and therefore I must grieve. Right. But like, I, 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 I'm really, the whole time that you've been speaking, I'm trying to remember where I got this from. But there was, just recently, uh, we were talking about grief with someone, or I saw it in, in a film or, or something, and, and they, it was something quite profound. It was like, you know, the grief is the thing that you take with you that reminds you of that person always and yes. it's it's positive it's good to have the grief but it's not good to let it define you and it's not good not let the grief have to you. let it have you mm -hmm. exactly you Which have is... it as a way to hold on and to have your memory of the person mm -hmm. that you love but you are in control of it and it's and a very fine be. line yeah it's a very fine line to get across and that's what lose your ties did for me was helped me to cross that line so that now I can accept that I do have grief mm -hmm. and I'm always going to have grief yeah um but good grief good grief <laughs> yeah. yes I there's like Calvin a, from <laughs> yeah. but that's a huge oh, huge difference yeah. and my life is my life is wonderful now. Mm -hmm. Good. And I know it. Mm. When just a year ago, it's been almost a year since mm -hmm. we first started talking, mm -hmm. just a year ago, mm -hmm. my life was not wonderful. Mm. Mm. Was it? No. Well, no. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It's been a long Thank journey. Yeah. It has been a very long journey. Very long. That's cool. But I was living, but now I'm alive again. Nice one. And that's what I will always be grateful for to you guys. Because that's the absolute truth. Pretty yes. humbled by that, to be honest. Yes. <laughs> I am actually alive again because of you all. Yeah, that's. I don't know how to handle that, but I'm just going to well, smile. Well, <laughs> smile. Just smile because it's... This was something that was orchestrated by a far bigger power than any of us. Yeah. Because this is um, this is what I needed to be able to be alive. Mm -hmm. And you know, it took a long, long time and a lot of prayers to to bring that around. Mm -hmm. And I didn't orchestrate it. And I don't think you all orchestrated. No, I think we were just a conduit. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What